world moves fast. We're busy people working full time in and out of the house, running errands, handling responsibilities, juggling last minute obligations and emergency interruptions. Not to mention the chaos in society that seems to be both caused by and making people go mad. And you are doing the absolute best that you can to not go mad yourself, but secretly, and maybe sometimes not so secretly, you're finding yourself saying certain words and certain tones that even 2021 you would be like, <gasps> at. This is just a reminder of five ways to be a decent human. And all of these start with <sighs> taking a deep breath. So I guess six. Taking a deep breath really does make a difference and not like a sigh, but like a gathering breath, a centering breath. Okay, here we go. And this is in no particular order. Number one, listen before speaking. You heard it before. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Act in proper proportion. By the way, that's not in the Bible. However, there is a proverb that goes, be slow to speak and quick to listen, which simply means be inclined to listen before speaking. Because we live in a high-speed world, our brains have become accustomed to processing lots of information in short amounts of time, and bless their little hearts, to help us out, they auto-populate gaps of information for us. This is helpful for things like going out of town and walking into a new-to-you Costco location. You don't have proof for it yet, but you're pretty sure that if you walk to the back of the store, you'll find the meat and apple pie, I mean, uh, the meat and produce departments. When it's not helpful, it's usually when someone is talking to us and our brain fills in the gap for the things we didn't hear because our attention is split or because what they said wasn't clear to us, but our brain is like, oh, don't worry, I got it. And come to find out the information is wrong or because we think we already know what they said. Either way, we made an assumption. And you know what happens if you assume it makes an ASS out of you and me. And you're classier than that. Not to mention that you appreciate when someone genuinely listens to you. So the next time someone is speaking to you, take a deep breath and maybe not an obvious audible one like I just did, but a mental one and listen. Many misunderstandings can be avoided by doing this one thing. Listen to their words. Listen to their word choices. If something is unclear to you or you didn't hear it or understand because they were speaking in low volume or with an accent that you're not attuned to, ask them to clarify or repeat it. Another thing is to listen to the things they may not be saying directly. Listen to their tone. Observe their body language. Here's a very simple personal example of that. Someone asks you, What's wrong? If there's really nothing that's upset you, you might respond with nothing. Now, depending on how caught up you are in the busyness of the day, you might pass it off as someone else's misread of your mood. Maybe take a mental note and move on. But if you're present in the moment, your curiosity is peaked. So you lean in and you ask, why did you ask? And now you're listening. Now, if it's someone of an impersonal relationship, be it business or something else, the stakes might be higher. Not listening can bring long-term consequences. Be empowered to listen and ask questions and then listen some more. Number two, imagine yourself walking in the other person's shoes. Life is hard for everyone, for you, for me, for the folks misbehaving in the comment section and even for the evil villains in the world. Every human at their core, some deeper than others, craves to be loved and accepted and truly seen for the things they most appreciate about themselves. This can get really complicated when trauma and compound trauma comes into play, but let's keep it simple and really just imagine how more full blown this would be with trauma and compound trauma. A hand up, Unwarranted grace and undeserved forgiveness can lighten someone's emotional load. It can be just the boost that they need to advance in life or miraculously lead them to repentance of their ways. This can happen immediately for them, or it can take years. You may not get to see the result on this side of heaven, but what goes around comes back around. I thought I told you, babe. All right, I had a little flashback. 
We all make mistakes and need help at times. For those who really struggle with this, just tell me that when it happens for you, a kind response isn't what you're hoping for. Number three, say thank you. Again, life is busy, the world is moving at hyperspeed, and now more than ever, a deep gathering breath and an intentional acknowledgement of someone's service goes a long way, especially to those who are employed to serve. At the coffee counter, at the checkout, at the restaurant, anyone on your payroll, and also especially to those most familiar doing the mundane, your spouse, your kids, your parents, your colleagues, your boss. Thank you is a simple way of gifting another soul an acknowledgement of their effort. It's a simple reflection of evidence that their role in the world really matters. Number four, talk with a person rather than at them. This is a distinction that someone made for me some years ago. I don't remember who it was, maybe my sister or my youngest brother, or maybe an old coworker, either way. It was someone who loved me enough to take me aside and inform me that my words have power both to harm and to heal, and that the same sentence spoken towards someone can land more painfully for the intended recipient than when spoken alongside them. Now, I'm going to give you a little compare and contrast so that you can see the difference. And I'm going to start with talking with, okay? Talking with someone listens, and it's conscientious of the other person's emotional and mental state. Talking with someone is curious and asks questions, not making any assumptions. Talking with someone recognizes a responsibility to love them as oneself, to aid in growth and healing and not to shame or judge, which destroys. Talking with someone allows for the possibility of discovering something about each other and themselves. Now, on the flip side, talking at someone is selfish and only wants to be heard. Talking at someone is often guarded and robs the speaker and the receiver of connection. Talking at someone rarely lends itself to finding an effective solution for the matter at hand. Number five, think thoroughly before making an accusation. Again, I'm going to attribute this to the pace of information flying at us and the human propensity to make snap judgments for the sake of one, filling in the gap of information lack that I briefly explained to number one. Number two, a bit of confirmation bias that sounds something like, I believe this about this person or this type of person. I heard that this thing happened. This seems like the type of thing that person or type of person would do, or that person has done this type of thing before, so therefore that person did the thing. Sound familiar? All right, and number three, our need to contribute in a meaningful way. When we do these things, it can be extremely harmful to a person's life or livelihood, or at the very least, create unnecessary trouble in their life. This is so serious that it made the Ten Commandments right up there with murder, lying, and committing adultery. It can cause social and or relational pain, financial stress, loss or harm to life or property, legal issues, or jail time. We may have become desensitized to a lot of these things, but when they happen to us, things get real. Therefore, before making an accusation, be sure that you've witnessed details firsthand or have verified evidence that the person did the thing. As a rule of thumb, and this is going to sound serious, but it's a serious matter. If you're not willing to bet your own life or your family's life on being totally accurate about it, either don't make the accusation at all or be very clear and honest when sharing the information that you don't have enough to reach a conclusion on your own. Remember. Life is already tough for everyone. So if we're aiming to lighten the load for one person, let's make sure it's not at the expense of another. So here's a recap of a reminder of five ways to be a decent human. Number one, listen before speaking. Number two, imagine yourself walking in someone else's shoes. Number three, say thank you. Number four, talk with the person rather than at them. Number five, Think thoroughly before making an accusation. And if nobody's told you yet today, you're doing a good job. And thank you for listening. And hey, if you heard anything educational, inspirational, or encouraging today, and you want more people to have the opportunity to hear it as well, please make sure that you subscribe, rate and review, and share. 
And as always, thank you for your support and for being the change that you want to see in the world.